I have a new mantra for May and it does not involve selling any of my crypto. When Lambo, I'm such a D-Gen. Welcome to D-Jenny from the blockchain where we defy logic. Yeah, that whole thing about selling in May and walking away. Um, I have a new mantra that I'll reveal um, after we go through this little article here from B in Crypto, where it says, we'll sell in May and go away, mantra, prove true in crypto. This was from April 13th. Um, in brief, the crypto market cap or total cap has increased in May to October five times over the past eight years. And the highest increase was 180% occurring in May 2017. So let's read. Sell in May and go away is a popular saying in the business and finance industry that suggests a strategy for investing in stocks but can also be used in the cryptocurrency market. The idea behind the strategy is that the stock market tends to perform poorly during the six months between May and October. The sell in May and go away strategy entails selling stocks at the beginning of May or late spring and holding the proceeds in cash until November or late autumn when investors would reinvest in the stock market. The rationale behind this approach is to avoid holding stocks during the summer months because I guess it means that the summer months, it's kind of like a lull period in the markets, investment markets. So you sell in May, walk away, come back in fall. What do you say? In this article, the previous performance of the crypto market cap is in the months of May to October, and that will be analyzed with emphasis on May. Okay. Historical crypto market cap or total cap. A look at the performance in May. A look at the technical analysis for total cap in the two-week time frame shows that the cryptocurrency market cap has actually increased in the period between May and October most of the time. But does it mean you should sell in May? Over the past eight years, total cap posted a positive performance in, in five of them with the amount of increase being 5%, one was 53%, 180% in 2017, 40% increase between May and October one year, and about an 8% increase. And then the highest increase was in 2017, about 180%. Um, but there are also negative performances of 47%, 16%, and 44%. So when it goes down, it seems like it goes down much harder than when it goes up. It goes up much less on average, it looks like, uh, except for this outlier. Um, so, oh, there you go. So there's the chart they're talking about. The highest decrease was in 2018, amounting to 47.24%. As a result, looking at both the total amount of increase, decrease, and the number of years in total cap, increase or decrease shows that the May to October period is actually profitable. Interesting. Sell in May and walk away. Is that just a, a myth? Should you be holding? And what will happen this year in 2023? The technical analysis from the daily time frame shows that total market cap or total cap broke out from the 1.17 trillion resistance area. This is a crucial area that has been in place since June 2022. Therefore, a breakout from it could catalyze a sharp increase. Moreover, the lack of resistance until $2.14 trillion in the total cap will make it easier to increase if the breakout is confirmed. The area is 78% away from the current price. And finally, daily RSI broke out from its bearish divergence trend line and is above 50. Um, therefore, the most likely outlook for May to October is an increase towards the 2.14 trillion resistance area. Well, well, well. The conclusion of this article from B in Crypto says that they think there will be an increase in total market cap in the crypto market between May and October and head towards the 2.14 trillion resistance area, which would be a, uh, about double, where a um, little under double where the crypto market cap is right now. And, and yeah, that's right. They said 78%, right? 78%, right. Okay. So, sell in May and go away? I don't know. Should we? Um, let's take a look at one more thing, um, and that's going to be the yearly Bitcoin chart. Um, and... Uh, yeah, show you that from, this is January 2017. So this was that big bull run 
from what around 3,000 up to around 20,000. And then there's a big red bear market that brought you back down to that 3,000 mark. Okay, but then look at 20 or 2019. Started a little run up. Bas maybe that was just sideways action, basically. Goes up about 125% or something to set. Oh, oh, well, it did wake up all the way here. But anyway, um, yeah, then in 2020, you have another huge green um, candle. And then 2021 was the finish of that bull run. And then 2022, huge, huge red candle back down to the 15,000. Um, 15,500 ish area. Okay. And now we're in 2023 and we've climbed up to basically the, uh, the beginning of 2021's price, right? Around 28, 29, 30,000. But anyway, what's the pattern here? What do we see? We see in our bull run 2017, we shoot up and then the bear market, the bear market 20, uh, 2018, comes all the way down in then three steady years of green yearly candles for Bitcoin. This is the Bitcoin tether chart. Okay. So if we're following this pattern of the year after our bull run, having that big down year of a bear market and then three green candles, that means we are in the first year of three green candles for Bitcoin. Right? So, yeah, there's going to be fluctuations up and down. But knowing that if you can just, if I can just be patient for two more years, these candles could be up here. You know, these candles could be up here in the $100,000 area. In a previous video that I can show you up here, um, I said that Bitcoin will get to about 140 dollars thousand dollars at the uh, peak of the next cycle and that's simply just doubling its all-time high of around sixty nine thousand dollars that's all where i got that from no analysis none of that all i see is that there's diminishing returns um in these four-year cycles but they're also diminishing uh, losses right so if there's diminishing returns i'm just going to put a 2x on it and i say around one hundred forty thousand. but anyway the pattern is our big red candle bear market. We had that in 2022. So now we're starting the first of three green candles to the peak of the next bull run, right? So I'm going to keep DCAing. I'm going to keep DCAing into my favorite tokens and into the market because I'm not going to sell. I am not selling unless there's an outlier like that 180% um, pump and it's bringing altcoins to the moon, right? So my new mantra is to just buy in May and DCA. I mean, I'm buying in May and I'm going to continue to DCA. That's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, my plan this whole time starting in about June 2022 when we saw that big, big, big crash down uh, uh, around, I think it was June 18th. That was the moment I started to DCA Here's Lioness again. Lioness is joining the, the video. Um, I started to, D to DCA on uh, in June 2022. I'm going to continue to do that until the four-year cycle says that the bull run is near the top. And I'm not going to try to time anything just like I didn't try to time the bottom. I'll DCA out of the market as I DCA'd into it, right? But May is not the time to sell and go away for me. It's buy in May and DCA. That is the new mantra. What do you think, Lioness? You like that? You just want to get your little neck scratched and why not, right? Don't we all? Uh, let me know what your plan is down in the comments below. Are you going to sell in May and walk away or are you going to buy in May and DCA? But always do your own research because this is not financial advice. It's just my blockchain reaction. Thank you for watching. Hey, thank you for watching to the very end. And before you go, please subscribe to the channel, crank up that like button, drop a comment and share the video. 
If you want to join me on the View It platform, the Web3 streaming platform, I'm going to migrate all my content over there and create new content on the blockchain. My referral link is in the description below.